Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If history has proven anything, it's that there's no perfect type of rock climber. From John Long muscling his way up routes to Lynn Hill's delicate mastery, we've seen that with the right training and talent, just about any body type can succeed. With that being said, there's one climber who, maybe more than anyone else, looks as if they're built exactly for their specialty, and that's Se Cheyun in lead climbing. It's not just that she's talented or that she wins a lot. We've seen people win with all types of physiologies. Rather, it's genuinely that Cheyun looks like she was built to be a lead climber. Like, if you could design someone in a lab to win on competition routes, it would be her. That's what we're going to talk about in this video as I break down why Se Cheyun, a little known 18 year old from South Korea, is built to be the perfect lead climber and why I think that gives her a shot at being one of the greatest competition climbers we've ever seen. First, let's start with a quick look back. In 2018, Yanya Garnbrandt was the most dominant force that the climbing world had ever seen. Her resume on the lead wall spoke for itself. Four golds in 2016, six in 2017, and four more in 2018. What's even more insane was that the eye test made her look somehow even better. She seemed to be on another planet from everyone else. She looked completely unbeatable, and by all signs, 2019 was going to be another year of dominance for the Slovenian. Instead, for the first time in her life, we saw Yanya go up against a climber who she couldn't match. It wasn't the legendary Kim Jain, nor the young outdoor crusher in Laura Ragora, nor any of the other established climbers on the circuit. It was a 15 year old with almost no competition experience. At the time, this was a stunning upset. Yanya had looked so far above the rest of the competition that it was insane to think that someone could consistently match her, let alone beat her handily, but that's exactly what Se Cheyun was doing. So how did she manage this? To understand how, let's talk about what it takes to be a good lead climber by using examples of three of Cheyun's main competitors, Yanya, Laura Ragora, and Kim Jain. First though, I want to talk about lead climbing in general and what this discipline requires. In outdoor climbing, lead routes can come in all shapes and forms. In a competition though, you can be pretty certain of what you're going to get. The route will be about 15 meters long. There will be a bouldery lower section to tire athletes out, and increasingly this has ended in a dyno with a relatively good rest hold for them to recover. Then it's into the business. Here the wall will usually tilt back and the climbers will need to perform a series of large, burly moves, often on bad holds or slopers, with very few good rests. The routes usually pass through a pretty distinct crux and then you'll hit the head wall. The angle lessens, the holds get smaller, and pumped climbers need to pull 5 to 15 thin, confusing moves before they can get the top. These routes create very specific requirements to do well. You need the route reading ability to climb efficiently, the strength to pull through hard cruxes, and the endurance to keep your energy up for the higher sections. Over the past five years, there have been three women in particular who have excelled on these styles of routes, and the cool thing to me is that they've all done it in their own unique way, just like you can build your own unique presence with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a no-code platform for you to build your online presence, whether it's a business or passion project. Squarespace's members-only features are one of the best ways to give exclusive content to your biggest fans while still keeping them fully within your ecosystem. You can create and share content easily with the social media tools, while their behind-the-scenes analytics are great for decision-making and planning for the future. Whether it's a blog, shop, or any other website, Squarespace can help you build it. Check out the link in the bio for a free trial, and make sure to use the URL squarespace.com slash ascensionism for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, back to the three women I was talking about. First, there was Kim Jain. Before we had Andra and Narasaki and Garnbrandt, Kim Jain was the name on the competition circuit. I've made a video raving about her in the past, but I'll give a summary here. Jain's main strength is her route reading and footwork. She moves incredibly efficiently, utilizing high feet, 
triangle positions, and creative reads to minimize the amount of energy she needs to move through any given sequence. She climbs really slow, taking rests wherever she can. If she had any weakness, it was her height and dynamism. She often struggled on long moves, and she wasn't the most powerful climber. Her technique was almost always good enough to get around it, but she sometimes spent too long trying to figure out the perfect beta read, and it meant she would run out of time en route. For five years, no one could hold a candle to her until Yanya Garnbrandt came along. Funnily enough, Yanya used almost the exact opposite style from Jain. Tall, powerful, and fearless, the Slovenian has a habit of sprinting her way up the route, sometimes barely pausing to take a rest. She can make the right beta reads when she needs to, but she's also powerful enough to just bully her way through sequences. Sometimes though, this dynamism comes to bite her. She's too eager here in Briansson, her hips are slightly out of position, and she falls. More recently, Laura Rogora has made a name for herself as a real threat. Although the consistency isn't there for her yet, Rogora has shown flashes of brilliance on the lead wall. She's almost a blend of Kim Jain and Yanya. Raw power mixed with endless endurance, she can fight her way up long, overhanging routes, while still having enough strength to punch through sequences that she doesn't understand. Her on-site technique still leaves something to be desired though, and she doesn't always have the same ability to move efficiently through sequences. So three climbers, three different styles, and three unique sets of strengths and weaknesses. Kim Jain with her technique and endurance, but lacking in power. Yanya with her insane power, but sometimes over-reliance on dynamism, and Laura with her unheard of power endurance, but not yet the route reading ability that indoor climbing requires. With these three, we can start to get a good picture of what the perfect lead climber would look like, and we can start to understand what makes Se Cheyun so insanely good. Cheyun grew up under the tutelage of Kim Jain, and because of that, you can see the same basis to their climbing. Slow, methodical movement, good footwork, and smooth technique. Everything they do is centered around expending as little energy as possible. In a weird way, I think Cheyun's technique is a lot more quiet. When Kim Jain climbs, you can't help but be blown away. She just looks so in control that it immediately catches the eye. Cheyun doesn't strike me in the same way, but I don't mean that as an insult. Instead, I think she has to do fewer creative beta reads and wild high feet because she has a few attributes that Kim Jain just doesn't have. First of all, she's tall and reachy with about 4 inches or 10 centimeters of height over her mentor. That makes it easier for her to make long moves, and this makes her climbing look almost smoother and less flashy. Next, I think Cheyun is just more powerful. She has less of a tendency to hang around, reading tough sequences to find clever ways through. Instead, on occasion, she'll just muscle through a sequence, using her raw finger strength to push through a few hard moves until she can regain her flow. Cheyun can get away with this because she also has insane endurance. So again, let's look at what you need to succeed on a lead wall. Endurance, raw strength, and route reading ability. We've seen climbers do well with two out of those three attributes, but Cheyun Se combines all three of them in a way that we've never seen before. Look at her here on the lead wall in Moscow of 2021. She flows so smoothly through the sequence, swinging her foot over into the split and then turning the right into a heel hook to let her drop in. A little higher, we get an example of her route reading. On these yellow holds, Laura gets the left hand up and then crosses through. She then has to swap her hands in order to go up. When Cheyun does it, she shuffles her feet left, swaps the right to a hand press, shuffles back, drops in, and then brings the feet back left. It's a less tiring way of getting the same result. Finally, look here in Xiamen. Kim Jain brings her left foot up to take some of the weight off before she matches on this handhold. Cheyun is a little too tall for that to work. She considers it, but then she just matches and brings the right foot up. It almost ends up working better, and it's a good example of not needing to become over-reliant on technique because she has the power underlying it. Now, I want to be clear that it's not as if Cheyun is flawless or unbeatable. We've seen her beaten before. What I'm trying to get at though is that if you could go into a laboratory and design exactly what you wanted for a lead climber, it would probably look pretty similar to Cheyun. She's powerful with good finger strength, but she doesn't become over-reliant on her power. 
Her route reading and technique are amazing, but she doesn't overcommit to them at the detriment of moving efficiently. She's reachy, but she's also flexible and doesn't have a lot of muscle weighing her down. It's as if you took one of the greatest living lead climbers, Kim Jain, and tweaked just a few of her attributes with a little extra finger strength, a few more inches of height, and rolled them into one young up-and-comer who, as far as I can tell, is only getting better.